Hey, Rev here, and welcome back. I want to talk today about some mistakes that backpackers make. So listen up, pay attention, and uh, hopefully you'll avoid these mistakes. When I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail, I'd been preparing for this hike for, oh my goodness, at least three years. But even though I felt like I was very prepared as I went on my PCT journey, uh, there were still some mistakes that I made. And not only that, but uh, there was a lot of mistakes that I saw other backpackers make. And so today I want to talk about some of those mistakes and uh, hopefully again, that you'll avoid making those same mistakes when you go out on your through hike or section hike or just a, a day hike. Now, if you're preparing for a through hike, hopefully these things will help you out. But even if you're not preparing for a through hike, uh, these things will help you out on a section hike or whatever hike you do. And so hopefully uh, everything that I'll cover will be applicable to you. And so let's get started. One of the main mistakes that I see many uh, through hikers and section hikers and just hikers in general make is they're not physically prepared as they get out on the trail. I had been doing a lot of uh, uh, section hikes and a lot of uh, shakedown hikes and just preparing for uh, the hike of the Pacific Crest Trail and uh i'd also been going to the gym and working out at the gym not only with cardio but also weights as well but i saw a lot of hikers start off on the trail and uh, had not done any preparation whatsoever and uh, many of them could not even get to the first stop on the uh, Pacific Crest Trail. And so again, if you're going to do any kind of hike whatsoever, uh, be prepared. Uh, do some uh, cardio, uh, uh, do some walks up a hill, go up uh, stairs, but prepare yourself before you go out and you'll eliminate a lot of uh, physical problems uh, like blisters uh pulled muscles uh stress fractures all kinds of things and so be physically prepared as you go out on your through hunt another mistake that i see a lot of uh hikers make is they don't have their uh gear dialed in now again uh, I had done a lot of uh, preparation hikes uh, with my gear and had tested it out. Uh, but still, when I went on uh, the Pacific Crest Trail, I found out quickly that uh, food weighs a lot and water weighs a lot. And when you carry those on your back, uh, it really does a number on your back and your shoulder muscles and things like that. And uh, so, again, make sure that you have your... Uh, gear dialed in and so that you're not constantly uh, swapping out gear for lighter gear and things like that. Now this next mistake <laughs> I see a lot of uh, hikers make and that is starting out too quickly. Uh, <laughs> it's not a marathon, I'm sorry, it's not a, uh, a dash, a, a hundred yard dash uh, to the Canadian border if you're going northbound but it's a, it's a marathon. It's a long distance hike. It's a long distance trail. Uh, and even if you're uh, doing a, uh, a section hike, uh, you need to not push yourself so much on the first day. Just take it easy. A lot of people just come right off the couch onto the trail and uh, they have a hard time uh, as they go hiking. And, and so take it easy uh, and you can build up to it. You'll feel your muscles getting used to it and you'll get what's called uh, your hiker legs. And uh, when you do, then you can do more miles. I didn't, good night. Uh, I didn't do, you know, 20, uh, 25, 26, 28 miles a day uh, at the very first. You know, I started off slow and then built my way up 
uh, to those uh, numbers. And so again, uh, take your time at the very first, don't start off very quickly or you're gonna have some problems. Another mistake that I see uh, hikers make in general is carrying too much stuff. Uh, <laughs> it seems like that uh, uh, hikers, uh, you know, if, they're ba if they have a 62 liter bag, they wanna fill it up uh, full of stuff, uh, but you don't have to do that. Uh, you tr try to be as minimalistic as you can. And uh, that way, again, you'll avoid stress fracture fractures, uh, uh, rolled ankles, pulled muscles and things like that. And so don't carry, the, <laughs> I was gonna say, don't carry the kitchen sink. Uh, there was a guy that I hike with on the Pacific Crest Trail towards the end and his name was Kitchen Sink. And oh my goodness, he had a tremendous bag, but he was a young guy and he could handle it. And uh, so again, uh, if you're an old dude like me, you're gonna have to not carry the kitchen sink, okay? Another mistake, and that is to underestimate practice hikes. Again, that is so important. Uh, again, when, when I started out on the Pacific Crest Trail, there was a guy that had never even put up his tent. Uh, he, he was out, this was his first hike. Now again, I know uh, many people uh, are successful in their first hike. Want to understand? Dixie uh, uh, did the AT uh, complete uh, from one end to the other uh, end of the trail, and that was her first first through hike. That was the first hike period, and uh, I, I realize that that there's exceptions to every rule, but uh, but don't underestimate practice hikes. Get out there, test your equipment out get used to being out in the wilderness and get used to uh, being by yourself and being dark at night and eating and cooking your food and all that kind of stuff. And so don't underestimate uh, practice hikes and what they call shakedown hikes and things like that. Now, this next mistake I saw a lot of people uh, make that was doing the uh, PCT when I did it, and that is uh, not taking zeros. Now, again, if you get a late start uh, in May or June, <laughs> whatever, uh, then of course you're gonna have to really rush to get to Canada on time before uh, the snows come uh, uh, in Washington, Northern Washington. Uh, but if you're, if you've got a normal, uh, start time and you're not rushed to finish, uh, then t take some zeros and, uh, enjoy the trail towns that, uh, that you pass through. A lot of those trail towns are dependent upon, uh, the commerce that comes from the hikers. And so again, uh, you're a good ambassador on the trail when you go into a trail town and take a zero. And uh, besides that, uh, when you get recu recuperated and your muscles get uh, uh, mended and healed and stuff like that, then you can go ahead and, and get back on the trail and, uh, and, and take it, uh, uh, then uh, not have to rush so, so quickly. And so take zeros. Now don't take a lot of zeros and because you'll never make it to where you're going. Uh, but uh, take some zeros, take it easy, uh, take time to smell the coffee, right? Or smell the flowers, whatever, smell something. Another mistake I see a lot of hikers make is uh, not willing to adapt. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that if a particular uh, gear doesn't work for you, uh, then swap it out. Uh, when you go into town and they have an outfitter there, uh, buy another one, ship, ship the other uh, gear back. Uh, uh, adapt uh, to a better way of perhaps maybe uh, cooking your food or adapt to a better way of hiking. You can always learn. Don't be so uh, bullheaded that you say, well, it's my way or the highway. Uh, no, you can always learn something. Uh, man, I, I learned so much there at the end of my PCT through hike. And uh, I changed a lot of stuff out towards the end. But again, I was willing to adapt. A lot of uh, backpackers, a lot of hikers are not willing to adapt and admit that, hey, there is a better way. And so don't be like that and don't make that mistake. Another mistake that I see a lot of 
uh, backpackers make. And, and I, I made this mistake and uh, it almost really cost me my life. Uh, but the mistake of not staying hydrated. Um, when you're out in the uh, wilderness and especially if it's hot and dry like the first part of the desert or the uh, the desert and the first part of the PCT uh, you're really thirsty and more thirsty than you think you are and uh, I, I got so thirsty on that uh, Oh, it was the section uh, past Tehachapi from Tehachapi to uh, Kennedy Meadows. It's It, it was the uh, Mojave Desert uh, section. And uh, one time it got up to 114 degrees and uh, I had ran out of water. I mean, I just had just this much in the bottom of my one liter uh, bottle. And uh, I, 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 I felt myself uh going into uh, heat exha heat exhaustion and dehydration and i was wobbling on the trail and uh becoming very lightheaded all the classical uh symptoms of dehydration and uh heat exhaustion and uh as i was walking in the i still had about eight miles to go before water source and as i was going down the trail and i turned a corner I looked to my left and underneath a bush was a one gallon bottle of water. Now, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I mean, now, it, call it what you want, call it coincidence or whatever. I believe it was a miracle. I really do. Because I would not have made it if I hadn't have gotten that, that bottle of water underneath the bush. It was there in the middle of nowhere. And uh, so, so take this thing of being hydrated very, very seriously, especially if you're in the desert. And even if you're not in the desert, uh, really make sure that you have enough water and that you stay hydrated. Now, this next mistake that I see a lot of uh, hikers make, and I call it romanticizing the trail. And uh, what I mean by that is you need to realize that the trail is not all uh, uh, rainbows and unicorns, as they say. Uh, I mean, we, you see these uh, these YouTube videos of these hikers that uh, uh, do these long distance trails. And uh, of course, they only show you the good parts. They never show you the parts where they slip down in the mud or almost fall off the mountain. Uh, of course, we, we don't show you those things, you see, but, th but they do happen. And uh, so when, when you get on the trail, realize that it's not all uh, fun and games. Sometimes you just have to, uh, as Darwin would say, you have to embrace the suck. I mean, sometimes uh, the rain. Uh, oh my goodness, when I was uh, uh, at the end of my PCT hike uh, in Washington in the Cascades, uh, it rained constantly. And not only that, but it was a wet rain and everything was wet. Can you imagine getting up in the morning, putting on wet clothes, and then putting in your wet tent and then hiking for, you know, 10, 11, 13 hours and then getting into camp, setting up your wet tent, getting out of your wet clothes and then doing that all over again. And it, it was, it was exhausting, really. And, and so don't romanticize the trail. Now, again, the, the sights are just absolutely beautiful. Unless there's a lot of smoke <laughs> because of the fires. And uh, even though you were looking forward to seeing Crater Lake and all you saw was just white smoke or, or brown smoke in front of you and you couldn't even see the lake. Uh, those are the things that I'm talking about. And so, uh, again, uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful trail. It's God's creation is, is just unbelievable when you go out there, but realize that it's not all going to be fun and games. And so don't romanticize the trail and realize that, uh, uh, that there's going to be some bad times as well as good times. And then this last mistake that, uh, I see a lot of uh, backpackers make, and I did it at the very first, and that is spending too much time in camp instead of on the trail. Uh, you're out there to hike. 
Uh, you're not out there to spend time, uh, you know, in your in your tent half the day. You're never going to uh, get to Canada or you're never going to get to Maine or uh, uh, Canada on the CDT or wh wherever you go. You're never going to get to the end of your trail uh, if you don't get out and start hiking. And so, uh, again, I used to get up at four o'clock in the morning, pack everything up, get on the, the road or get on the trail at five o'clock. And then I would hike for uh, about 13 hours until about six o'clock. And then I would get into camp and uh, eat and then get to bed by eight o'clock. And you say, oh man, that is early. Yeah, I know, but I wanted to see the sun rise uh, in the morning. And so that's why I was out there early. Uh, but get out on the trail. Uh, do more hiking than you do fellowshipping <laughs> uh, in the campsite and spending time in the campsite. You'll have all the time of the world to rest when you get home. And so don't make the mistake of spending too much time uh, in camp and uh, not enough time on the trail. If you're doing a hike uh, soon, hopefully these uh, ideas will help you out uh, as you go on your hike. And uh, leave me a comment uh, about perhaps maybe some other mistakes that you can think of uh, down in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, be sure and do that uh, as well. Now, also, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the things that I've learned out hiking over my 25 uh, years of backpacking, uh, be sure and check out the video uh, that's up here. Click on it and uh, perhaps maybe it'll be a help to you as well. And so until then, I'll see you next time. See you on the trail.